ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد my brothers from the time of the creation of man there's always been a battle against someone who wants to harm you this is part of our very existence as human beings the first man to the last man this presence of harm has always and will always be there so after allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created adam and hawa alayhi wasalam he told them to live in jannah but in jannah at that time he said subhanahu wa ta'ala that there was an enemy faqulna ya adam we said to adam inna hadha adun lak this is your enemy to you in jannah wa li zawjik not just for you but for your family as well fala yukhrijannakum min al-jannati fatashqa so be careful because he wants to create misery for you my brother's man then came down a man's struggle with those who wanted to harm him continued so from the very first of the generations of humans nuh alayhi salam they said to him inna huwa illa rajulun bihi jinna they said this man he's just possessed don't listen to him he's not a prophet they started to call him names they started to insult him they started to tarnish his honor and his reputation they mocked at him wa qulna wa qulna ma marra alayhi mala'un min qawmihi sakhir min every time the leaders of his nation used to pass by they used to mock at him you're making a ark in the middle of the desert first you used to be a prophet and now you've become a carpenter this is the kind of thing that they used to say to him but they also said to nuh alayhi salam his people qalu la in lam tantahi anuh if you don't stop with this call of tawhid la takunanna min al marjumin surely we will punish you we will throw stones at you and we will drive you out of your home this is from nuh alayhi salam and if you read the quran you will see examples after examples hud alayhi salam salih alayhi salam ibrahim lut shu'ayb alayhi salam jami'a there are so many examples but the message is clear over and over again as long as humanity remains as long as people remain upon the haq the religion of allah there will always be an enemy allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in summary وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍّ عَدُوٌّ شَيَاطِينَ الْإِنْسِ وَالْجِنِّ Likewise, we have made for every prophet. And if there is a prophet, an enemy for a prophet, then there will be an enemy for those who follow the prophet. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍّ عَدُوٌّ Likewise, we have made for every single prophet an enemy. And these enemies, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, شَيَاطِينَ الْإِنْسِ وَالْجِنِّ They are the shayateen, they are the evildoers. from man and from jinn yuhi ba'duhum ila ba'din zukhruf alqawli ghurura they encourage one another with speech which is beautified wala sha'a rabbuka ma fa'alu if allah wills they wouldn't have done this if allah wills the enemy wouldn't exist fadharhum wa ma yaftarun leave them and what they are lying about My brothers Allah has allowed the existence of the enemy for a wisdom and from the greatest of those wisdoms is to make 
apparent the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The enemy exists, the harm exists, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will establish his justice, and he will make this apparent. And there are many examples in the Qur'an, but one of the best examples is in a young man, his name was Dawood, alayhi salam. He was one of the companions of Musa, alayhi salam. He was a pious man. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after he saved Banu Israel from Fir'aun, he commanded them to enter into Bayt al-Maqdis, into Jerusalem, whilst making sujood. وَدْخُلُ الْبَابَ سُجُّدَ وَقُولُوا hitta. Enter into Jerusalem, making sujood and making istighfar to Allah. He, Dawood alayhi salam, was one of the very few who said, I hear and I obey. But most of them, they rejected Musa alayhi salam. They rejected the command of Allah. They said to Musa alayhi salam, minha. We will never enter into this place. We will never enter into Jerusalem as long as its inhabitants remain. So they rejected Musa alayhi salam. They rejected the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as a result, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Bayt al Maqdis, Jerusalem, Palestine, haram for them. Qala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says to Musa, فَإِنَّهَا مُحَرَّمَةٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَةٌ For 40 years, they have to wander the land. يَتِيهُونَ فِي الْعَرْضِ During this wandering, whilst they were homeless, Musa alayhi salam passes away. And after a couple of generations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals upon his prophet that there is a man called Talut and he should now be the king of Banu Israel. إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ بَعْثَ لَكُمْ طَالُوتَ مَلِكَ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Talut to make an army and take Banu Israel into Jerusalem once again. Let's try again. Let's see if they will enter. Making sujood and istighfar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the enemy was still there. The natives of that land were still there. And some of these people from his army remained disobedient from Banu Israel to their own king. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, فَشَرِبُوا مِنْهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِنْهُمْ He told them, don't drink from the river, but they drank from the river. Disobedient. But from them was this young man, Dawood alayhi salam, who's not a prophet yet. He was a teenager, according to some of the historians. He was a person of iman and piety. And because of his iman, he was courageous and he depended upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as they were entering into Jerusalem, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even tells us what they were saying. They were making dua to Allah. Qalu, Rabbana, Afrig alayna sabara. Oh Allah, give us the patience to follow the command that you have told us to complete. Wa thabbit aqdamana and make, us feet, make our feet firm. Wa nsunna anukum al kafirin and support us against those people who have rejected you. From the enemy, there was a fierce warrior and his name was Jalut, Goliath. This man has killed people with his bare hands. Millions, maybe, hundreds maybe, not millions, hundreds of people with his bare hands. He calls for a jewel from one of the warriors from Talut's army. Nobody steps up except for Dawood. This giant of a warrior has in front of him a teenager. So he starts mocking at Dawood. Is this the mightiest of your warriors? Where are his weapons? Where is his strength? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَهَزَمُوهُمْ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ By the permission of Allah, Dawood fought him. وَقَتَلَ دَاوُودَ جَارُودَ Dawood alayhi salam overcame the enemy and the tyrant even though they didn't expect it. Even though they expected defeat for this young man. They laughed at him. And they thought that his destruction was there, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree cannot be overturned. Not only was he obedient to Allah and successful in this, look what happens at the aftermath. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now makes him a prophet. Wa Allah al mulk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from this young, weak man, gives him kingdom. He becomes a king. Wal hikmah, wisdom. Wa allamahu mimma yasha. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him from revelation, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted, he became a prophet. Jalut, the enemy, the tyrant, looked at his defeat and he laughed at it. He mocked at it. 
He said, my defeat is not going to come from here. But the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be overturned. Not only was Dawood successful, even though nobody expected it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him established in the land. My brothers, Allah has decreed that there will always be enemies, there will always be tyrants. This is because in order for us to appreciate and give thanks for security, there has to be weakness and there has to be fear. In order for us to attain the reward of attaining justice and being sabr on having sabr in the face of oppression, there has to be an oppressor. The only way that we can understand this if we have iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says within this context, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows these things to happen because of his favor, subhanahu. My brothers, in the presence of evil, there gives rise to a great deal of good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us in the Quran, Tilka darul akhirah, naj'aluha lilladheena la yuridoona, ulumun fir'audi wa la fasada. والعاقبة للمتقين بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن والسنة أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولجميع المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو غفور استغفر الله الحمد لله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. أما بعد ما بدأ السستس، we are now truly in winter، and the days continue to get shorter، and it's important to remind ourselves that we will only have salvation in the life of this dunya if we attain taqwa and piety in Allah سبحانه وتعالى. and from the most important pillars of attaining piety after tawheed and shahadatain is the establishment of the salat. my brother، there is no disagreement between the ulama. From the former Zahib, that if a person does not pray, then that person has committed a major, major sin. To the extent that some of them have said, if you leave one salat, that person could be punished in the hellfire because of one salat. In winter, the salawat are close together. It is wajib upon us to preserve them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, فَخَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ After the prophets passed away, mankind left their ways, meaning the ways of the prophets. The first thing, Adal Salat. They left and they gave up the Salat. Shahawat. And when you leave the Salat, you end up following your desires. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, For so for your qawna ghayya. They will then be thrown in Ghay. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anh. He said, Ghay is a valley in the hellfire. They left the Salat. These people will be in the hellfire, in a valley in the hellfire, because of the abandonment of the Salat. Also, my brothers, in winter, fasting is encouraged. The Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith, which is attributed to him, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, As-sawmu fi shita al-ghanimat baridah. Fasting in winter is a cool treasure. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has encouraged for us, when these days are short, to fast. Soon, my brothers, you will be able to establish Salat al-Tahajjud as late as 6 o'clock in the morning. You can establish your suhoor at 6 o'clock in the morning and maghrib as early as 4 o'clock in the afternoon. The Messenger of Allah has said, this is an opportunity for you to attain a treasure which is easy for you to attain. Hasten your breakfast, delay your lunch, and you will attain a cool treasure, as he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In another hadith as encouragement, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, man saama yawman fi sabilillah. Anyone who fasts one day sincerely for the sake of Allah, بعد الله وجهه عن النار سبعين خريفة. For that one day, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will distance that person's face from the fire seventy years. Seventy years. How many days are short in winter that is possible for you to fast? How many years that you can distance yourself from the hellfire by doing something which the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described as a cool treasure? Also in winter, my brothers. There is an encouragement and an increase and an opportunity for us to establish the dhikr of Allah and make dua to Him. And we can do this by staying in the masjid. The Prophet ﷺ said, Intidhar salat, ba'd salat, waiting for one salah, after the other salah, dhuhr to asr, not long, asr to maghrib, not long, waiting from one salah to another salah in the masjid, dhalikumur ribat, dhalikumur ribat, he says, ﷺ, three times. 
That is a great deal of goodness. That is a great deal of goodness. If you are in the masjid, waiting from salat to salat, winter now becomes an opportunity for you now not only to increase in fasting, but also in establishing the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dua to him and maintaining yourself in his home or one of his houses from his house subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, my brothers, from the rulings in winter is the reward of performing wudu and ghusl. Despite there being difficulties, despite the weather being cold, the Prophet ﷺ said, Shall I not tell you of something? That if you do this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expiate and remove for you your sins. So they said, Bala ya Rasulullah, of course, tell us ya Rasulullah. He said, Isbaghul wudu al makari completing the wudu and completing the ghusl also, whilst you find difficulty in doing so. In winter, there is an opportunity for you to attain an expiation just by you simply performing wudu and ghusl, as long as you remain patient and don't complain about it. That person is attaining an expiation that he probably wouldn't attain at any other time of the year. Also, my brothers, from the ahkam connected to wudu is the permissibility of wiping over socks. This is the view of many of the companions. Ibn um, in the Mundir, radiallahu anh, he said that the companions used to wipe over their socks, whether they were made out of leather or otherwise. And he gives us a list. He said, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Ammar ibn Yasir. Abu Masood al-Ansari, Anas bin Malik, Ibn Umar, and the list goes on. Bilal, Abi Umama, or Sahli bin Sa'ad. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah said that there are a number of 13 companions who gave the view and the verdict that wiping over your socks is something which is permissible. So this is something now which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made easy for us to establish during this period. Also in this period, in winter, my brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed that people will be tested. This is a time where people can increase in giving in sadaqah and being of support to those people who are in poor and those people who are needy. My brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed that the life of this dunya is a test. You will find enemies, you will find obstacles, but those people who are sincere and they work towards the akhirah, they will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make easy their way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make them steadfast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them acceptance in the dunya. And when they return, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with them and not angered.